What is the worst thing someone has ever shared to you? Christmas party. People sharing their funniest drunk stories. Everyone laughing until one drunk guy tells us how he and his drunken buddies threw a couch out of an apartment window, and it landed on a woman, killing her several years ago. Awkward silence for a good 10 seconds. Comma 10 seconds. Uh, that's all. My boss's wife was fat. She once told everyone that she was going to lose weight because she hadn't been able to wipe her butt for more than a year. She said she had to roll a towel up like a baguette and scooch along it on my bed. She then pantomimed the act. This comment is the worst thing someone has ever shared to me. My dad cheated on my stepmom when I was about 20, over 10 years ago. Shortly after they get back together, my dad calls me up and asks for a ride home from the doctor's office. Almost as soon as he gets in the car, he explains that he was there getting stitches in his dong because he and my stepmom had so much sex that the skin on his dong wore out. Acquaintance got hammered. Told everybody the reason she settled for marrying her current husband is because he gave her herpes and she figured nobody else would date her after that. That's just all around sad. Not the worst, but the saddest. Some guy came up to my till to return some toys. I had to ask him why he was returning it so if it was broken or whatever, we could process it properly and not return it to the floor. I was expecting her extra birthday present so she didn't like them but he told me that his granddaughter had died a couple days before her third birthday and even showed me a pic. I didn't really know what to say, but looking back on it, I think it was probably easier for him to talk to a stranger about it. My cousin crap himself playing WoW because he was in a raid and couldn't let his friends down. That was something he should have taken to the grave. Hilarious though. M-A-A-A-M. Mayam. Bathroom. A guy from El Salvador I used to work with during my construction days would tell stories of him fricking his neighbor's sheep when he was drunk. He would push the sheep up towards the riverbank and start fricking it. Apparently, they're very afraid of water or something, and they freeze up at the sight of it enough so you can get it in. They're probably afraid of water cause they always get raped in front of it. My friend told me that he talks to his rainbow dash plushie at night and that he hears her talking back to him. It's kinda sad and made me feel kinda depressed because I don't want him to be so lonely. I talk to a stuffed spider sometimes. Fortunately he doesn't talk back. Not that crazy yet. I used to work with this guy who shared with me very graphic details about how he hooked up with a girl and right after he was finished he realized that she was unconscious but later learned that she had actually died at some point in the event and he was questioned by the police for quite some time. He told me all of this while we were waiting on the coffee pot to brew. Edit I. The best part of all the responses I am getting are either from this thread or another a scready thread of what movie makes you cry every time. So everything I am getting replies to are either Forrest Gump related or necrophilia related. Kind of fun to not read which thread they are coming from and just roll with it. A lot of people are talking about graveside scenes and dying mothers. The confusion is real. Somebody just told me that this is on Netflix. I don't know if he means Forrest Gump or this dude having sex with a dead person. Edit 2. Lots of questions and lots of funny responses. I don't know how she died. I didn't ask for the autopsy report nor did I want any more details. I don't know the technicality of when it turns into necrophilia. I don't know if he tried got anal. Yes, you and I would both notice if somebody stopped moving but he obviously did not notice or did not care. My boss once informed me she needs to have sex at least 6 times a day in order to be happy. 6. When does she have time to eat? To sleep? One time a girl had shared with me early in a conversation that she had been raped by a ghost and had woken up naked on the floor of her room. Obviously she didn't forward that chain email. Had a Tinder date where the chick admitted to having just gotten out of prison for vehicular manslaughter involving a DUI. She told me this while annihilating bottomless mimosas. Within 15 minutes of meeting this wonky lady, she's talking my ear off and not letting me get a word in or leave the conversation. In spite of my efforts to keep things light and pleasant, I got to hear all about how her daughter was a rape baby and how many emotional and academic problems said child has. I just felt terrible. I don't even know you, lady. I'm not a therapist and I have my own demons to deal with already. TYVM. 
When lived in Manhattan I had a doorman who was young and very kind. He was a teddy bear of a guy and was always friendly and helpful. He even bought our daughter a cute little outfit when she was born. One day in passing the subject of his father came up and he just blurted out, Well, he molested me when I was a kid, so I don't really talk to him now. I was running into the elevator with my baby in tow and could only muster a dumbfounded sorry to hear that and rushed off. I've regretted that moment ever since, and wish I would have been more helpful, or empathetic. Clearly, it was something he needed to talk about as it appears to have escaped his mouth during a quick and innocuous conversation. If he came out with it that easily I honestly don't know if he'd prefer for you to make more a deal out of it. One of the crappy parts of having something bad in your life is that people react so strongly to hearing about it that you feel like you're being impolite if you mention it, even when a passing comment might not be a big deal to you. I met a friend sister whom I'd heard plenty stories about, that she always wants attention makes up medical problems, etc. I thought people were exaggerating and being mean until I met her. Within a single minute of meeting her, she has started telling me about all of her uterus problems, going into detail about all the surgeries she's had and medication she's taken. This girl I worked with came over and, for reasons I will never understand, said, I have to start braiding my hair before I go to bed. I just pulled the biggest hair ball out of my vagina. Apparently my hair is breaking off and getting stuck down there. I could have gagged. A co-worker told me about how her husband used to chew her food for her and feed her when she had jaw surgery. I asked her why they didn't just use a blender and she got annoyed with me because I guess I didn't realize that he loved her so much he wanted to do this for her. I put my lunch back in the fridge and went back to my office. So grossed out. But ending at a hotel a drunk guy said, and I imagined in his head sounded casual and cool, that he had a barely conscious woman that he has been banging between stops to the bar. He smugly offered me a go at her as his tip. I served him another drink, politely declined and called the cops. Guy was arrested at the bar and later sentenced to prison for rape. This was 4 months ago. Good, why are drunk people so dumb? I was 25 many years ago, sitting in a club and this gorgeous girl comes up to my table. She was girl next door cute and tastefully dressed. She is super friendly and we're totally hitting it off. Sweet girl. All of a sudden she decides to unload all of her darkest secrets on me in a no biggie matter of fact tone. She had been arrested multiple times for stealing. She lost custody of her kids because she neglected it while she was doing age. Her ex used to beat her, there was more. Really, I'm not one to hold your past against you, I'm really not. Who you are today is what matters to me even then when I was just a kid. But dang this girl hit me with a bazooka and I've seen less baggage in an airport. Honestly, a part of me thought I could definitely have sex tonight with this gorgeous girl if I pretend to not have a problem with all of her crap for just a few hours but good lord I was terrified that she would eat my soul if she got me alone. And I'm telling you, if you saw this girl you would swear she was an innocent little Christian girl. You just never know. My co-worker of a week told me all about how she was fasting in order to be closer to God, so that she could get her kids back after vandalizing get ex-husband's car. Also about her long history of drug addiction but now that she was saved she was immune to things like opioids. Incredibly awkward but now I know who to avoid at work. Had a co-worker tell me that she got pregnant at 18 and gave the kid up so one of her relatives would become legal guardian. Showed me her BDSM foot fetish Y Twitter account with some graphic pictures, and texted me pictures of her poop. I just started getting to know her when she told me these things too. I get people who overshare emotional things, like the kid thing, or get really excited and want to share their passion, like fetish culture, poop text, I don't get it. A stranger once told me that he was molested and physically abused by his parents, and that's why he drives trucks cross country for a living while he habitually shoots up a cocktail of M and H. While I was visiting my mother-in-law in the hospital, she had to go to the bathroom. She opens the door, calling my name, sounding anxious. I run over to her, look at the color of my poop up, no. So she makes a huge fuss till I finally realize 1, she isn't going to stop till I do and 2, the god awful smell won't go away till I do, and 3, she is even weirder than I thought. 
Backstory. Okay. There was this obese deaf gay guy that worked in my office. He was nice enough but shared way too much. I think he needed someone to vent to and tried to play off the really awful stuff that happened to him as normal. Guy really needed to see a therapist. Anyway one day he told us his transformative story. Apparently he was on an overnight trip with his Pentecostal church leader and the guy molested him. He said they had a beautiful relationship but dude was 12 at the time. But anyway he claims this is the point that really showed him the path to take in life. Dang dang dang. Obvious statement. That's awful. Less obvious statement. Sometimes people reconcile things for themselves in weird ways. People have their own narratives of their lives and it's fine if they don't feel how they're supposed to about something. Maybe he needed to believe that. Called a 20 year old M addict patient's mother up to let her know that her son was in the year and was doing okay. The mom broke down on the phone telling me how she was dreading the day she was going to get a phone call informing her that her son was dead. She told me how her son had been a good kid growing up. She had tried to get him help for his M addiction to no avail. The last time she saw him she was driving him to rehab. And he had jumped out of the car at full speed and run off. She hadn't seen or heard from him since. She knew her son was engaging in high risk sexual behaviors and that he was injecting. Never have I heard such a defeated voice. What killed me is that she asked me where she went wrong as a mom and I had no reply for her. Later that night the patient tried to hang himself with the oxygen hookups on the wall. While we were struggling to cut him down all I could think of is how I was going to have to call his mom. Dang and I thought this thread was gonna be funny. This kid my girlfriend knows casually mentioned that he fricked three of his sister. He said that he was just teaching them that BDSM was right. I'm not saying it isn't for some people. I just put it that way because one of his sisters is in 5th grade. One is in junior high and the other is a freshman in high school. Not sure if he was joking or not but the idea is unsettling. I knew this guy back when I went to her school and he was a major creep. I doubt that what he did was done without a lot of manipulation. You should probably tell someone about this. Giving a co-worker a ride to go pick up a company truck. We were just sitting in traffic not talking then he looks at me and said, If you want to get drunk really fast you should dip tampons in vodka and shove them up your butt. I didn't respond. Put it in your south mouth. I was talking to this crazy homeless guy outside of a bar one night. And he told me that once when he was a teenager working on a small ranch that his father was the manager of, he fricked a horse that he claims was coming onto him. He apparently believed he was the only person on the ranch at the time, but shortly thereafter his father was fired from his manager position and never told his son family why. So this guy thought his dad lost his job cause someone spied him fricking this horse. Why he calls the rancher's wife a horse is beyond me. My abusive father once graphically shared a sexual encounter to me including what he had said and done. Yeah, it was a rape he committed. A few years ago, a co-worker, now retired, stopped by my office and we chatted for a few minutes. I would normally just exchange pleasantries with her from time to time, but she stopped in and seemed really intent on sharing a story with me. We were talking, and she brings up the topic of her elderly father who lives in a nursing home. She tells me about how he took a nasty fall down some stairs at the home, and from nowhere pulls out a photo of this poor guy. I was startled to say the least as she shoved a 4x6 mugshot style photo of what looked like an elderly man in some terrible walking dead makeup. This fellow must have fallen down the entire set of stairs at the home. She held it out there for several seconds and it was so gross I had to look away. I was polite as I could be not to say something rude to her, but just as quickly as she dropped by, she said he would be fine and then left. For some reason, I picture her going cubicle to cubicle with this picture, playing show and tell with everyone. A few weeks ago I was on the bus. Sitting next to me was this chatty black guy. He was mostly talking about his job and how it sucked. Then he started telling me about one particular day. But one day I decided I wasn't going to let the bulls get to me. I was going to go into work with a pep in my step and have a good day for once. Then he started doing that thing people on TV do where they laugh hysterically but continue talking through the laughter ha 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 and the next day ha ha ha. The next day the police were at my work ha ha ha. They were looking for me ha ha ha. 
They thought I was going to bring in a gun and murder all of my co-workers ha ha ha. At this point me and a few other bus riders were in awkward seal mode inching away from this guy. After a bit of laughing he calmed down and said apparently you can't tell your boss you've gone bus a cap in his butt. A friend's girlfriend once told me that if she didn't know me, she would think I looked like a rapist. Back then, I had a taste for weird shirts, weirder facial hair, and aviator sunglasses. I am now, of course, totally normal. I relayed this comment to my poker table, and the new girl across the table replied, You don't look anything like the guy that raped me. This is, unfortunately, not all that shocking, and emo should be discussed more. Depending on the study you pick, women in the US have a 1, 5, 1, 3 chance of being raped in their lifetime. By the time they've hit 18, 20% of women will have experienced some form of sexual assault, not just rape. My mother was sexually interested in me. My stepfather wanted me to join them in sexual activities because my mother stopped putting out. I live 2000 miles away from them now. I live in New Orleans, and a girl at work told me and another co-worker that she moved to New Orleans because we have a very large black population and she wanted to frick black guys. Also a story about she got fricked in the butt behind a dumpster somewhere, and one about waking up one morning and still having a condom inside her from the night before. I was at a Japanese hibachi steakhouse with my parents when our Indonesian waiter started telling us about cultural divides in his home country. It didn't get weird until he got on the topic of circumcision and made sure to inform the table that he was circumcised. I work as a valet at a hotel and a guest was having his vehicle pulled around. Someone didn't write down the location properly on the ticket, so we asked him for a description of the vehicle. He said it was a red truck that had a busted headlight. While one of my co-workers went to get the truck, I asked him about the headlight. He said his wife did it and that she had let the insurance expire like a week before it happened. He then went on to tell me how he was going to divorce her soon for unrelated reasons. He said he was paying for the lights and then getting out. Also, he mentioned that she had been recently diagnosed with some kind of terminal cancer, but he was divorcing her anyways. I stood there awkwardly until there was another guest to help. The fetish they enjoyed. It started out pretty normal, brunette, amateur, coed, until several minutes later, it went something like, I would lick her tender butthole right after she took a crap. I, I just don't know. Oh. An autistic friend of mine once just revealed how his father used to routinely beat the crap out of him, molested him, and beat his mother. Felt sorry for the kid as he was a fantastic friend, worked really hard at everything, and was incredibly smart, and I may or may not have been a little gay for him. I was scrolling through reddit comments when this guy talks about how an autistic friend of his was abused and molested. He then went on to declare that he wanted to tap that. Co-worker I barely knew, me, long week, a, her, not for me, I'm taking Friday off, 3 day weekend, me, nice, got some big plans, her, I'm not gonna feel like doing much, I'm getting an abortion that day, me, scrambling to not say the frick you say so you'll probably just be catching up on Netflix, huh. I once helped a friend and his roommate move out, I knew his roommate for maybe a couple months. Only had a few conversations with him before, but when I was stuck alone with him cleaning the house, he just kept rambling on and on, and then all of a sudden I realize he's telling me about how his dad molested him when he was younger, how he's reconciled with him, and how it's affected his life. To this day I still don't even know what to think about it. My mother telling me about her infected vagina, along with the green streaks it left in her underwear. I'm glad she's off Xanax now. Welp. I guess I am not fapping tonight. Today at the doctor's office, the nurse told me that her granddaughter passed away this year. This nurse is maybe late 40s or early 50s. I didn't know how to respond to that. It's terrible to hear. I feel bad about the situation, but it's an awkward conversation. If someone says something like that then just give them a hug. You don't need to think of something to say and it'll make them feel better than the majority of things you could say was having a sleepover with a friend during high school. After we started trying to actually sleep in her bed, 
she rolls over and says you're really lucky I'm wearing my night clothes tonight, I usually sleep naked, I suddenly became highly aware of how crusty the bed felt, she probably hadn't washed it in a month. Speaking as a slob, I've gone over a month without changing bed sheets and they weren't crusty, those bed sheets were either abused or they were there much, much longer than a month. Since he has decided to evict me out of the blue, I don't feel bad about mentioning the things that my walking stereotype neckbird roommate has overshared with me. He told me that he used to be gay, that he grew up desiring men and still gets man crushes to this day, but has forced himself to be with women because being gay is wrong. He also told me that he had a full-blown romantic sexual relationship with his sister a few years ago, lived together as a family and acted as a father to her kids, who were not his, thankfully, and everything. Funnily enough, part of why I'm being kicked out is so that she can't move in. The other part is because I won't date him. What the frick? I think you're going to be a lot better off away from that creep shell. I may have shared this elsewhere, overshared. My girlfriend one afternoon in bed at her place, basking in the afterglow of summertime Saturday sex, told me about the time she smeared peanut butter all over her hoo, whore to try to get her dog to get intimate with her. The dog was on the floor next to the bed when she revealed this. I was so stunned I just nodded like, yeah, that. Maybe I was close minded, maybe I was immature, maybe I hadn't yet found my freakier side, but I never quite looked at her, or her dog, the same. I still like peanut butter a lot, though. It's actually pretty common. I've had quite a few friends admit doing this, usually in early teen years when hormones are aging. Teens do crazy crap. We had a new employee at work, I said hello I don't know why. To be honest I am not that friendly and I didn't even introduce myself. I just said hello. I started walking away and he said something so I turned around. Worst mistake ever. This dude talked to me for 35 minutes about how his wife left him and how they went and saw a counselor and how she started banging this dude and how he's with this big titted redhead now. He also whipped out his phone and showed me nude pics of her. All of this from me just saying the word hello. Never again. Hello. Not even once. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.